Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a starting steps series for Japan, particularly talking about 1.3. Now Japan is a country that has uh, a bit of unique challenges and a bit of unique flavor. Uh, they do have a restoration event chain, or for honorable restoration, it's not active yet here, but we do see honorable restoration here. And so they have some unique flavor. Uh, they are a relatively high population country at the start of the game with 31 million, and they are pretty resource rich if you uh you know kind of go through their areas they do have a decent amount of resources a little bit low on the oil that's never going to come back to bite them and so this is kind of uh japan's starting situation what's unique about japan is they start out with some really backward laws namely isolationism and closed borders which uh most other countries do not start out with but then they also have the regular backward laws of traditionalism and serfdom alongside monarchy and autocracy and on top of that they have the samurai a uh, unique interest group which does has a unique ideology of the bakufu which causes them to support monarchy serfdom and autocracy and so passing getting out of these is harder and what 1.3 has changed is it's made everything a lot harder to pass through uh, because you don't have the corn laws anymore or you still have the corn laws but they're a lot harder to proc they're harder to proc the larger your pop pretty high pop country and so in order to pro uh, proc them we would have to build a lot of stuff we don't want to build so we're not going to do it that way um, you know uh, these uh, the laws passing slower and um, the lack of corn laws specifically uh, does really really uh, present a lot of new challenges challenges for 1.3, which is why we're revisiting them in 1.3. Um, our goal for this mini run is going to be uh, doing the honorable restoration and then the Meiji restoration following that as quickly as possible while still kind of having a high fidelity towards increasing construction and having a strong economy. It's not an absolute speed run of these, uh, but we are going to be, you know, trying to get them done in a timely fashion. To that extent, or to that aim, we are going to be using a lot of exploits, and so I just wanted to put this at the, like, front of the video that we're going to be doing this, because a lot of people might not like this. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to actually be re-rolling this moderate out. Um, for most countries, having a moderate landowner at the start is actually incredibly strong, because what you do is you reform, you put him in, uh, you take him out of government, then you exile him and then the exile can roll a random ideology you try and roll abolitionist the abolitionist will allow you to get rid of serfdom and then you uh, invite them back and you put them in government the problem is is we cannot invite any agitators because we have closed borders so we have to get off closed borders before we can do anything like that um so that's kind of the exploit that we can't really use uh what we will be doing is we will be re-rolling until we have uh someone with uh the jingoist ideology at the very start because this is not a locked in ideology on our interest group here and we would prefer a jingoist uh for our start um the second thing we're going to be doing is going to be we're going to declare war on new south wales it doesn't matter what for uh for the purpose of of opening our market uh the uk will put in an open market war goal on us and we'll just open up our market later on we will be declaring war on russia and just landing alaska for recognition and just holding alaska and then holding our own island and this will allow us to easily get recognition on russia and there's one other exploit i just it escapes my mind right now Okay, so the final exploit we will be using is we are going to actually be save scumming. And we are going to be save scumming in a particular way. Uh, we are going to research, uh, very first, stock exchange, which allows you to roll a market liberal. Once we have stock exchange research, we will fire any sort of landowner or shogunate interest group people in the military. Uh, so the, both these guys have got to go. We'll probably just fire him first and then fire the reformer. And then what we will be doing is we will be exiling our shogunate uh, landowner, this boyo, uh, and we will be keeping on exiling him until we roll a new guy who is going to be market liberal. Again, uh, the stock exchange allows us to roll market liberals, and so about three years into the game, we will get a market liberal, and so we are going to be, you know, reforming um, some of the jingoist laws first, and then looking three years down the line to get rid of serfdom and traditionalism, and uh, maybe land-based taxation, look to open the borders, all of these things um and so this is going to be kind of the three big exploits that we are going to be using uh for this run if you don't want to see an exploited run at all um find something else to watch i suppose and uh thank you for the the few minutes you've been here uh but other than that let's jump in and get ready uh by re-rolling this until we have a jingoist shogunate leader 
All right, so we have found ourselves a jingoist boyo. Um, the very critical things that they endorse are going to be colonial exploitation and professional army, which normal shogunate will not support. Uh, and so we will be using this guy in order to pass these two laws in the first three years. So just kind of taking a look at our laws strategy overall, what we will be doing is we will be going for these first. You see, we can go pro army. It's huge supported. Normally the shogunate will oppose this because of peasant levies. And so we will be trying to make a very happy shogunate uh, kind of in the short term uh, by doing this, which will allow us to fire these guys without too many complications. So we are going to fire this guy. You, uh, we can let you go, uh, retire commander, and we can let you go. Oop, other one. We will also be deleting most of our military, but that's uh, coming back to that later. And so, secondly, we will be using these guys to pass uh, colonial affairs. We're going to actually do colonial exploitation first. Um, we are going to keep... Uh Actually, let's take out the landowners out of government now. This makes us much more legitimate, uh, but it will make the law pass roughly the same speed because uh, it will pass faster with the more righteous government. Um, but colonial affairs is going to be important. We do want to finish colonizing Sakhalin before Russia gets any type of colonization uh, because otherwise we will be in a little bit of trouble. We already have the tech research, but we do need to get on colonial exploitation in order to do that. Once we get these two laws passed, or kind of three years from now, we will be exiling this guy until we get a market liberal, and then we will use that market liberal to then go after both serfdom and traditionalism specifically. And so this is going to allow us to reform the market stuff really, really, really quickly. And so this is the main idea. And so as far as technology goes, uh, we can take an unpause just to let the game tick a little bit. Actually, let's build a construction center somewhere because we can't bear to let this go. And what we are doing is we are waiting to see uh, what laws will be natural spreading to us. So we have cotton gin, paddle steamer, and romanticism natural spreading to us. We were looking because if stock exchange was natural spreading to us, we would not research it first. But since it's not, we're going to research stock exchange first. And this is going to take us 35 months uh, to research here. Uh, so this is kind of what we got going on in terms of all the laws. For the diplomacy, it's very simple. We don't want to get our pie thumbed, and so we will improve relations with Russia, uh, and then prioritize next UK, and then with the remaining points, we will go for Great Xing. We do not want to improve relations with Korea, so we will just leave that be. And so that's kind of our diplo spent. Um, now, let's go back to the technology and talk about this a little bit more. After we research stock exchange, um, there's going to be several texts that are somewhat important. We do have academia already researched, so we can build the universities. We won't be building them super early, but eventually we will want to build a lot. Uh, but empiricism is a tech to be looking at or to be interested in. And also, a bunch of production tech is going to be what we're interested in. We are going to go for cotton gin, lathe into atmospheric engine. Uh, we are doing cotton gin and lathe first before atmospheric engine, so we don't suffer the malice from the level two. And also, very importantly, lathe is going to be a huge technology because we need to get the industrialists up and coming, and the industrialists right now are very, very, very weak. What we have to do is we have to change the ownership of buildings to be owned by industrialists, uh, which is what lathes really unlocks. Here we have dye workshops. It's a locked behind lathes. Uh, we need to research lathe before we can switch to these. Currently, they are owned by merchant guild owners, and we want them to be owned by capitalists. Without going into too, too much detail, because I did this quite a lot on the other ja uh, Japan starting steps, moving everything to being capitalist-oriented and capitalist-owned is incredibly important. And while we will be not doing it as fast as possible because we're going stock exchange first, getting onto these very quickly and having this market look like this is going to be very, very important for this run. And so this is going to be how we are researching the tech. After this, we will probably go mechanical tools into railroads, but there is a chance we go empiricism instead. But this is the first idea, um, you know, kind of in terms of what we will be doing for this. Um, now, as far as authority goes, uh, the reason we took the samurai out, even though they're trying to pass our laws, is we actually want to suppress the samurai. Uh, once we get the honorable restoration, we will have to kneecap the, uh, the armed forces in particular, and so we are just trying to get ahead of that to make that portion a little bit faster, because in, my, in the past, that has been the one we've kind of gotten stuck on. 
Okay, we will also be uh, suppressing... Well, the Buddhist monks can help us out a little bit. We will also be bolstering both the intelligentsia and the industrialists. Now, we are not going to immediately get rid of isolationism, even though we can do it day one, uh, because we want this extra authority to pass laws a bit faster. And it looks like we have 100% or more excess authority. We're going to look to spend a little bit more of this authority. But other than that, uh, floating a little extra would not be terrible. Uh, we're going to tax services. Is floating a little extra would not be terrible because it will cause us to pass laws a little bit faster um, and we really do not get a lot of revenue here as you can see uh, from a lot of these taxes we'll put one in on tea because we would rather the tea be a little bit less profitable uh, and it makes a decent amount of money and then we'll kick these up to max level and so this now we see we have a good amount to work with now uh, if you're trying to min-max, it would be better to keep it at medium level until you are losing money and then push it on up. Uh, but we are just going to push it on up immediately because we always forget. And by we, I mean me. Okay, so this is that sort of stuff all set up. Um, and now we need to, to talk about... Oh, what's the next thing before I'm pausing? One moment... Okay, we are actually going to spend a little bit more authority than I said. Um, these taxes we're fine with. Floating a little bit is fine, but there are a few that I want to get in, and that is particularly road maintenance in Kansai, where we are going to be building up specifically uh, a lot of our manufacturing at the start here, and in Tohoku, where we will have a lot of our resources, and then we will encourage resource industry here, and then we will uh, float a little bit extra. We'll do the, the trick where we bring this up to get a little bit extra authority uh, so we can encourage manufacturing and then we will tone it down so I guess we don't have a whole bunch of extra you know authority to work with but if we did it would be fine and what we will be doing in terms of the economy is we will be in Kansai we will be building up in particular tooling workshops relatively early and look to push construction here as well pretty high and the idea behind tooling workshops being the first thing we focus on is we're going to focus on tools wood and iron uh specifically early on and we will be doing the iron and the wood over here you notice we already have five logging camps here this will get juiced by the 20 percent throughput of encouraged resource industries and it, i believe it is our tallest area where we can build iron mines and we will be building this as much as the infrastructure allows the reason we will be building building it in one place is because we really want the economy's scale uh, bonus so the throughput is very very critically super important here because uh, when we have 24% throughput it's like having 24% extra buildings so instead of this being like five buildings it's like six and a half buildings and so this will allow us to make better use of our construction and we will be building construction centers in these two places specifically uh, so that we can juice these up now we want to first build up to the point where we barely have a positive balance in terms of construction centers and only then do we want to swap over to iron frame construction or start to swapping over to iron frame construction and so what we're going to do is we're going to slap down uh, five construction centers in each of these places uh, and then we will be kind of this will be our first construction for a little while while we are ramping and ratcheting up also before we unpause here we are going to want to delete almost all of our military military this is going to be a semi-exploitative thing we are doing we're deleting all of our military except the military in Kansai because what we will be doing is we will be also forcing a revolution that we are going to win and we are going to win because we are going to hold the capital and the capital is going to be the only place with a regular army now what we will also want to do is we will want to kind of wait until we have line infantry or something else or cannon artillery uh all already set up um, this is not 100% essential you can day one force a rev and win the revolution uh, but we are going to try and do it a little bit more cleanly and a little bit less expensively and so this is what we're going to be doing here as far as rural stuff goes, we will want to swap on the harvesting tools relatively early once we get our tooling workshops up this will make the rice farms less profitable which is a little bit preferable or it's going to decrease the labor, which is going to increase. Uh, by decreasing the labor, you increase the amount of pops that are going to return to the sub farms, which will decrease the price of grain, which will decrease the amount of rice farms needed. And so we will also probably do fig orchards. We can do that straight away. We'll swap to butchering tools against once we get that up and running. Uh, but kind of coming through this, we see logging camps 
as far as our early game construction strategy goes, the most critical thing is going to be getting these logging camps onto sawmills. And so once we kind of get our flight of however much construction it takes to only be making around 5k, then we will build tools and we will look to get all of our logging camps over to sawmills, which will increase the wood output greatly, which will decrease the price of construction, which will give us a little bit more, more money so we can build more construction. We also want to, of course, swap over the fishing trawlers, make sure they're privately owned, make sure these are privately owned. Ownership is very, very critical here. We don't want the shopkeepers to be getting dividends. We want the industrialists to be getting dividends. The very important feature for this is the shopkeepers contribute 5% of the weekly balance, the positive balance. Uh, they contribute 5% of this to the investment pool and the industrialists contribute 20% of that. But that 20% currently is getting kneecapped or cut in half because we are very importantly on traditionalism, which is a big bad. You see the minus 50% capitalist. And so this is going to be, um, while it's not ideal, we do still want to get everything capitalist owned as quickly as possible. This will also increase the clout of the industrialists, which we need in order, if we want to do any agitator shenanigans, we need to get rid of closed borders. And so uh, this is also going to be very, very, very important uh, on this front. We do have a few other laws or a few other PMs we need to swap before unpausing. Uh, and that is not these because we can't bring these up until we have lathes. Uh, but very critically, uh, the ones that we need to move to free churches because we do want to move in the direction of the intelligentsia and this will help bring the intelligentsia up because they will be instead of being employed by uh you know admins and clergy now it's just ad bureaucrats and instead of being uh both by just state run it's going to be you know split into uh clerks as well which these clerks intelligentsia see uh also these uh, let's just take a look at the bureaucrats which i believe are mainly petite bourgeoisie but also intelligent well they're mainly intelligentsia right now and so now we kind of have everything all set up uh for an unpause we are not going to declare a war at start because we want to use the authority uh that we have from isolationism uh once we get off of isolationism we will have less authority and we just want to make a use of a little bit of it right now our first war is going to be on New South Wales, and we're going to use it to open our market. If we declared a useful war, uh, probably for the loud car outside, probably for Mara, uh, so that we don't have to build a huge navy, what will happen is the UK will join against us. Once the UK joins against us, uh, they will ask to open our market. Uh, and if we back down, we'll have to pay Mara money and open our market. And so our first war is going to open our market, and we are going to want to do that uh like very first and we don't want to do that yet so we will not be declaring a war yet we get colonial exploitation or enthusiasm we will probably take just the enactment chance actually we already have so much enactment chance we're gonna take the colony growth speed uh and we will i believe have an interest we're gonna look to declare that interest here in kenya uh and look to maybe get a little bit of kenya it's probably yeah the uk is gonna be a little fast but colonization is based off your incorporated pops uh of which we have a lot and so we will actually have a decent colonization speed but we'll be coming back kind of when we have all of our construction centers up uh we might put a few more in uh just looking to wind down our positive balance to a really low level we're gonna put in a little bit of a quality of life buff um related to trying to keep from building as many rice farms as possible so rice farms the problem with rice farms is that they are going to be owned by the aristocrats which are the very interest group the shogunate which we are trying to undermine throughout this entire run um in order to get as weak as possible so we can pass through a bunch of reforms so we would prefer not to have rice farms now rice has a substitute good grain has a substitute good which this is going to be a big part of why this gets produced is because of grain and that substitute good is fish and so what we are going to do in uh kyushu specifically we are going to put this on auto expand for the fishing wharves here, uh, which will expand slowly. Now, fish prices are pretty low right now, but fish is a straight substitute for grain, so pops will eat fish instead of grain. And so, because of this, you can look to push uh, specifically uh, more and more fish uh, so that you can kind of depress the auto queue's desire to construct any amount of, uh, you know, grain farms a little bit. And so, this will be a nice QOL. And we have chosen Kyushu because Kyushu uh, can build the very tallest. It will have the most throughput from economies of scale out of any of our provinces because they have the highest potential for fish. 
we get colonial exploitation here uh, very, very quickly. Only had one uh, tick that was not positive for us. So we will put in colonies uh, in Hokkaido, Sakhalin, and also in Kenya, where we had declared an interest. Now we, you see, we are actually colonizing a little bit faster than the British. So we will get some good frontage, especially once both Hokkaido and Sakhalin finish. We do kind of want to make sure we get Sakhalin all colonized before Russia has a crack at it. And we will also cover in on our next law which is we want to go professional army this one is going to be important uh, because it is going to allow us to um, how should I say uh, we will be able to both give military stuff to the conscripts and it will also decrease the shogunate's political strength this is one of the laws that we need to pass it will increase the uh, armed forces so it's a little bit of a wash in that way uh, but importantly it's going to make our rev that we're going to force a little bit easier for us to win because we will be able to give uh, you know, goods, uh, other than just, we will be able to give cannons here to our conscripts, and so this will be helpful. Every once in a while, we will cruise through and take a look at the generals and admirals we can recruit. In particular, this boy is going to be useful because he is an abolitionist. He supports the intelligentsia, and so he will boost the clout of, um, you know, the intelligentsia. We're just not going to, we're going to pretend like this isn't a thing. But the abolitionist specifically will help us to pass laws. So we will recruit him and then probably promote him up a couple levels. Uh, maybe not all the way because it will be a drain on our bureaucracy, which is mildly a concern. Uh, but this will allow us to do this. We are also going to take a look at the Navy. We are trying to massage clout here, by the way. This is the, the main purpose, and we see these are all sh uh, shogunate, and of course another, none of these are market liberals, so we will not recruit any of these guys uh, currently. We could recruit one and then exile him just to try and um, you know get through this a little bit. Uh, maybe we will do that. We will recruit this guy and exile him uh, so that we can take another look, because we know the landowners are super happy with us right now. Eventually, we can and force a rev just by exiling more of these guys unless they have fixed this feature uh, but now we can take a look and we can see if there's a different admiral we can recruit probably just going to be another landowner uh, but this is a useful thing to do we are almost kind of where we have our construction centers all built out and we can talk about the next step because we are barely 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 making money here and so the next step is going to be we'll let this uh this fishery finish the next step is we are going to build in kansai we're going to start the tools up and we're going to build a couple levels here and we are going to put them on auto expand and what the tools will do is they will allow us to switch all of these chop chops which the wood is very expensive now because of all the construction centers we will be able to switch these over to sawmills which importantly is going to be owned by capitalists, which are going to con contribute more to the investment pool, but also they are going to give clout to the industrialists, which again, we need to pass the laws we want. Also the intelligentsia, so that's pretty nice too. Uh, following that, uh, we will need to build iron so that we can do the same thing with the tooling workshops, and so we can start moving our economy overall in a more industrial uh, kind of direction. So very briefly, we did run a shortage here of softwood, uh, but now it is starting to get brought back down because we have started to implement some of our logging camps with these tooling workshops uh, here we have going. Uh, we have three that we have built, but now we want to transition to building iron here in Tohoku. Again, keep in mind the logging camps and the iron are both juiced by the encouraged resource industries and the construction is much faster because of the road maintenance. These are going to be the only two provinces we build in for a little bit. We have a bunch of infrastructure to go and we will just be continuing the loop of going, you know, tools, iron, and, um, what is it, wood, uh, and this will be the main loop we are currently going. We are going back to making money. We, as you can see from the balance, we were losing money when we were doing a shortage of wood, and so we will want to kind of descend into the point of not making money. Now, we have fewer construction centers here. We will want to turn on the construction centers here or turn on construction centers somewhere else a little bit slowly and ramp up and swap over to iron frame buildings. Once we get a little bit more iron, we'll probably build one construction center here and put it on iron frame. That way we have a little bit of a staggered swap up because we cannot swap up, you know, this level 13 construction center we have here in the capital. We cannot swap raw dog this all the way up to an iron frame building immediately. Also, just consider this, we are about to get professional army. Following that, uh, we will be doing a little bit of thumb twiddling because there aren't really uh, very many laws we can get in. Uh, we might try and put the intelligentsia in and see what they can do. Uh, I think that we will not be 
be that legitimate though, so meh. But maybe it's worth uh, taking a shot at a few laws with them. Now that we're getting tooling kind of up and running a bit, we are swapping all of the logging camps over, which we previously didn't have all swapped. We will swap onto butchering tools and we will swap onto harvesting tools even though it's not profitable for reasons expressed earlier, it will move people out of the rice farms and back onto subsistence farms. And on the subsistence farms, um, it will be, you know, preferred because they are producing more grain overall as a result of us using tools, uh, which is something we want because the rice farms will going to, are going to be aristocrat owned, the tools are going to be capitalist owned, and so this will lead to us having a higher proportion of buildings being owned by the capitalists, even though it's not profitable. Um, you can see we're having a little bit of come up in terms of money. Money. We are going to look to add a little bit more construction, maybe to around 80, and then we are going to look to open our market by going after uh, the UK which is going to lead to a deficit of bureaucracy so we want to get enough construction that we're not so focused on ramping up construction that we can deal with the fact that we're going to run a bureaucracy deficit so we get stock exchange here also notably we are going on to landed voting here uh we are going to just kind of take a teaser at it now's a kind of good time to pass it uh we've had some pluses and minuses and overall it's been a wash uh but we can try and come up on it specifically now uh as far as the technology goes just a reminder we are going to be going for you know this atmospheric engine so we can switch the atmospheric engine uh ownership over so currently we are building mainly iron and wood now currently these guys our merchant guild owns we want to make them capitalist owned and in order to do that we do need atmospheric engine pump also this will kind of set us up in a good spot to get railways um, in a timely fashion when we are going to need them so this is why this is the the technology plan um, as far as the law plan goes uh, there's not too many laws that are really good that we can pass right now we're going for landed voting uh, but, uh, you know, we are well, actually now's the time for the reroll, isn't it? So we were going to go for landed voting first. Um, but now is going to be the time where we need to do a little bit of rerolling because we are going to exit this guy or exile this guy repeatedly because he can roll a market liberal. He can now roll a market liberal now that we've unlocked this technology of, uh, you know, uh, stock exchange. And this is the whole point of going stock exchange first is now we can roll him. And so we are just going to take a quick look uh, at the military. Uh, first, to see if there are any market liberal boyos, uh, specifically Jingoist, or uh, in the Admirals, because if they are very likely, uh, if you exile, you are very likely to get one of your boys. Uh, so this guy's Jingoist, Jingoist, Jingoist. And so, nope. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a save, and then we are going to repeatedly exile this guy. Uh, of course, maybe we're just super handsome exile time, baby. That's close enough to baby. Uh, we are going to exile him, but maybe since we're so handsome and good at this game, uh, we'll just get it on the first try. So we're going to go reform government. We're going to take this guy out of government. So now we can exile him, and we are just going to exile the dissident. And we're just going to hope we get a market liberal. Now we can roll a market liberal. Of course, we're just so handsome. That guy's a jingoist still, but we roll another jingoist. Just kidding. We'll be back with a market liberal. Okay, we are back, and we are back without a market liberal. Uh, I did it about... Uh, so first of all, I couldn't figure out how to re-roll, uh, to change the checksum to allow us to re-roll at the exact same date. And we have played about four months worth of uh, every week uh, trying to reload and exile uh, Mr. Shogunate Leader. And every single time we've gotten a moderate, a passive, or a jingoist. So uh, I'm not sure if it's a bug or just an extremely low roll chance. In theory, the roll chance should be better because we do have... Um, you know, we have economic systems that a market liberal would not like, uh, but we're not getting this re-roll through, and I'm not going to try and re-roll for several hours just to get the market liberal, but in theory, this is the way you would have the most explosive kind of start um, thing going on. Uh, we are making a little bit of money, and we want to not be making money. Um, also, Let's kind of take a look in here. We have built two universities to proc the event, uh, the university event. Once this fully employs up, it should be this. Uh, we should get the event. Uh, we will switch to secular academia, though. But we're mainly just trying to uh, provoke the establish a university event, which will give us uh, some extra juice towards um, empiricism, which we are likely to go in relatively short order. Um, empiricism is going to be kind of the tech we are looking at. If we go railways uh, after our atmospheric engine pump, uh, following that, we will go empiricism so that we get uh, public schools, because uh, that will be a lot more um, 
education access than private schools and the schools will help to allow us to uh, push our tech forward um, in a big way. We also finished the colonization of Hokkaido in this time and so things are going pretty well. We do have an agitator. We are colonizing a bit faster than the UK so we might even cut them off uh, which will be nice if this is uh, what happens but we also uh, managed to pick up an agitator who just happened to come to our kingdom, um, our kingdom, our empire and so uh, we'll see how that agitator shakes out but now the change the plan has changed a little bit uh, we will be kind of more slow and steady so we will want to get this landed voting through uh, because it's not going to be so easy to kneecap the shogunate uh, unless we can find a really good way to come off of serfdom and I would really particularly like to go homesteading because that will really extra kneecap them and so what we might end up doing is we might end up provoking the revolution a little bit earlier than uh, planned um, but we will see how that shakes out exactly so we moved our interest and started to play against the UK or against New South Wales to liberate New South Wales. We have no intention of doing this. We're just waiting until this ticks up and then we will be straight up backing down. Uh, this Sackland native uprising is actually pretty annoying, but we will just be backing down and now we have free trade. Notice we lose access to a ton of authority. This is why we didn't do it at the very beginning. Uh, we will remove a consumption tax on the luxury stuff and we will stop bolstering um, I believe, oh man, I just want to keep bolstering all these guys. Maybe we will just keep this. Uh, this will hurt uh, the opinion of all these guys, but this is maybe okay enough. Um, we'll just keep, we'll just float this negative for now. Uh, but this will allow us to do trade. Uh, we'll put in these mobilizations and we can now import cannons um, very critically. So we will be swapping our PMs up on that relatively shortly. We will return our interest here to Kenya. Um, although we probably do want to do this one state shuffle in Mara pretty soon uh, so we will also uh, add a single uh, naval base here um, which will is all we really need for that and now we are going to want to do a ton of trade um, we are going to very critically want to do a ton a ton of trade so let's first things first let's uh, put on some cannons on our guys and then we're gonna need to unpause let the game tick or this is my preferred way of letting the UI resolve itself. And now we need to import cannons. Uh, we are going to, we have free trade, so we just uh, don't tariff them anyways. And we're gonna import from the British. Other than this, we are going to want to import uh, specifically most of the goods that are going to be owned or oriented uh, by the capitalists. And we're gonna want to import them from Xing specifically uh, now that we have free trade. And so we're gonna want to import the fabric and we're gonna put it in on Xing. It's not gonna take too, too many convoys. And we can also take it in from the British, it looks like. So let's do Xing and British. Again, these are going to be kind of expensive in, on the bureaucracy, and so we do want to be careful on that, but fabric is going to be the most critical one. It is the most expensive one for us, although meat is a little expensive too. Um, and then we're going to take a look at silk, uh, and we're going to want to do the same thing from Xing. And then we are going to take a look at tea, and we're going to want to, again, do the same thing from Xing. And this is, it doesn't look like it's going to be profitable. We might do it anyways, but the idea is that it is going to... Uh, reduce the price of these goods in our market which is going to discourage our auto queue from building these things um, and so this is going to be particularly useful and of course grain if we can import it we cannot import it very profitably yet uh, but Qing is just barely not profitable so we'll put this in because we know we will want it at some point and so it's not costing us very much bureaucracy because we have free trade and so this is super super nice and uh, this will allow us to orient our economy more landowner oriented and also the cannons are going to be nice um, and so maybe we'll be revving soon certainly we're going to finish the Sakhalin thing first though I can't remember if this uh this event was free uh here before 1.3 or not but this minus 75 percent for 20 years and minus 100 percent popu 100 popularity is going to be a pretty big deal and it is going to help us get the shogunate out i think that we would have not necessarily done this uh because now we are having huge uh negative authority there's a lot of negative oppo approval and so we might have waited a little bit a while longer but this is going to go a long way to kneecapping these guys very quickly and so we probably are going to want to rev soon and just do something like this and then put in, uh, you know, a swap to, uh, what is it, homesteading, just like right off the bat, and this will radicalize the landowners, and so they will rev. The problem is we kind of would prefer to just rev only the only the landowners, not the landowners and the samurai, um, but again, we do want to resolve this little tiff uh, first here. 
So I think for the sake of the economy, we are actually not going to rev here at this point, and we are going to try and get landed voting in uh, first, uh, because if we rev, what will happen is we'll just nuke the clout of the Shogunate, but then we're going to have a really hard time passing any laws once the Shogunate's nukes, because we're still on monarchy autocracy. And then uh, also behind this, we'll get a ton of devastation all over the place. It's not going to be a fast revolution uh, or an easy one, or, well, it's going to be easy, but it's not going to be that comfortable. Um, we won't be able to win it super fast with just these battalions, so I think we're gonna put it off just a little bit longer and wait for line infantry to natural spread to us maybe um, and look to just kind of focus on the eco now and take a later date kind of of a Meiji restoration but in order to have a much stronger economy uh, going into it we have deleted a couple construction centers I think I mentioned this we're going to delete a couple more and the main idea is we're going to look to start swapping or finish swapping these on over to iron frame buildings which are going to be less costly for us and so we will have an equilibrium where we're we're kind of a little bit better on the money here because we do have to be concerned about that for a while this authority is really uncomfortable though i'm not sure the best way to resolve this other than maybe we are going to stop suppressing the samurai uh they're not very strong as is and we'll just float this negative 225 so we're going to look to do the single ship shuffle here and get in on Mara. That way we can expand into Oman and slowly expand this way. It's very important that you uh, open your own market first on the UK before you do this, because otherwise they will join every single play. And we do see we've dropped legitimacy, and this is a bit unfortunate. Uh, we can lower taxes to get just slightly more legitimate, uh, but then we are going to risk running into a negative spiral here. Um, we are building a ton more iron. The main idea here is that we are looking to turn this onto iron frame buildings even if we have to delete a couple of these construction centers to do it um, this is going to be kind of where we want to go and we also want to push this up to level 21 that way we're going to have the max economies of scale throughput just like we want to push this up to max level also just to keep in mind we are encouraging resources here we still have infrastructure and so this is going to um, kind of help us out a lot uh, the war does pop off so mara doesn't black down uh, but luckily, we only need just a tiny bit of troops in order to get it done because they have literally zero troops. So this is why this is the point of ingress. You only need uh, a boat in a dream, and then you can get into Mara, and then you puppet Oman, and then you get native interests in a few places. We will also, we should have done this after, as soon as we declared the war, but we'll move our interests back here so we can continue colonizing. We might even be able to get a cutoff on the UK. So we are pushing into Oman now, which will notably give us a native interest in Arabia, Persia, and uh, down here into uh, I think this is Zanj uh, but this is going to help out a lot because we will be able to declare interests elsewhere and do other stuff elsewhere and speaking of helping out a lot, wow that's nice, we get progression to adoption, this law is going to be, uh, or this tech is super super good here in dye workshops but very important uh, with lathes is now we are moving these guys from being merchant guild owned to privately owned which is going to greatly increase their profitability uh, we will on the back of this want to start using our glass a lot more um, we probably should have swapped this pm up before but now that they're capitalist owned they will contribute more to the investment pool now it is still again nuked by our traditionalism which kind of sucks which is giving us minus 50 percent which is why getting off of this is priority and why re-rolling for the market for, uh laissez-faire guy would have been uh critical if you're like trying to do a speed run of this you, it's probably essential that you just keep restarting until eventually you get the laissez-faire guy but um this is going to be, uh, we're going to be able to make some progress. Now, we are going to need to import some stuff. And so I was just kind of letting that tick. Uh, we are going to need a whole bunch of lead. We're going to import it from the British market, but I think we also can produce some lead. I think, yeah, we're starting to produce it. We had built this ahead of time in anticipation of needing this. And so hopefully we get landed voting in, and then maybe we provoke the revolution, or we go for recognition on Russia. Kind of one of the two here. We are keeping an eye on and trying to uh, recruit if a new admiral or general pops up that is someone we would like. Uh, we are trying to recruit them up. A notable example is this guy. We recruited because he uh, supports, he's a Republican uh, and he's armed forces. So ev eventually we could promote him up. If he gets enough popularity, he's neutral popularity. I think you need positive popularity, but it almost always promotes these guys um, when you get, when you do an exile. So we might be able to exile, you know, him in order to pass 
last parliamentary republic sometime down the road by exiling this guy and then the other guy gets promoted but what we're really looking for is a market liberal um landowner specifically it would be super 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 nice uh, but we're we're being a little it's being a little sticky on that also if i'm not mistaken uh we do get a little lucky here uh or Nope, never mind, just kidding. I misread that. Uh, I thought we were natural spreading empiricism. We w we do want to go for empiricism, but we're going to get atmospheric engine uh, first, which is going to boost up a whole majority, like an enormous amount of what we built, because we have been focused on the iron here. And it's going to very nearly double, and this is going to be a huge, big tech uh, for our economy. Uh, you know, we are in a little bit of trouble here. We definitely don't want to run a negative, um, because uh, you pay so much interest while you're on record. So we either have to get recognized in the near future or we have to wind down construction and I'm not certain we can stop Russia from landing us is the problem. If you can stop Russia from landing you, uh, then you can just go after Alaska and this is fine. Uh, but I'm not sure we're in that boat at this current juncture here. So we get our first election in here and it is kind of juicing up the clout of the industrialists a little bit which is going to be super nice we are trying to use the petite bourgeoisie at least right now uh to reform specifically uh getting us off of closed borders they don't have a lot of clout they're not going to have a lot of clout in the future i don't think there's a good way that we can kind of uh, well this actually looks pretty legitimate so let's do this uh in particular uh it's nice that we can get the industrialists in uh and fairly legitimate and they are going to help us to get off of uh closed borders so we're going to try and get on to migration controls we would prefer no migration controls, but migration controls is fine. This is part of, you need this for the Meiji Restoration. And so we are making progress. It's not necessarily super fast progress. And then we're going to look for another war here. Uh, I do believe we will acquire a new interest for free. And so we can kind of uh, go a lot of different directions. Uh, but probably just looking to like land expand, um, you know, throughout somewhere here. Let's just double check that we are in fact uh, colonizing Kenya. We are. Uh, we could look to colonize over here though and uh, expand where we specifically have interests and look to colonize right here uh, so that we can cut that off and give ourselves a large frontage for the colonial game in the future. So we currently got a lot going on here. Uh, we are producing coal, trying to get ready for eventually going atmospheric engine, which we are getting a research up right now. Uh, to that end, we are creating demand out of the urban center here we will look to turn on all the coal and as far as expansion goes we're going after Sind here which we should be able to make relatively short work of we will do a, take a little naval invasion a little cheeky invasion here um, Russia is kind of looking belligerent towards us which is okay because we want force recognition on them anyways resource boom boost them further that's kind of the first we've gotten that and we've managed to balance the budget a little bit we'll be looking to add construction as soon as we get rid of paying for interest you don't want to pay on interest on unrecognized states and and so this is going to be a pretty big deal but once we get atmospheric engine pump we should or atmospheric engine we should just have a massive pop-off i think we do have do we have another place that produces coal or is it just the one i know okay is it this and hokkaido so we're gonna look to add a couple more of these to the front of the queue we get atmospheric engine pump we'll of course put these onto atmospheric engine pump and then we will put these onto atmospheric engine pump which is going to of course switch them over to being capitalist owned we will we will nuke the uh the uh, paying for that there because I don't think we'll be able to support it and we will see now the price of iron is now very 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 cheap which of course makes it so we're paying very very little for construction goods and so this will allow us to hopefully add a little bit of construction uh, you know here in a way that is uh, relatively comfortable now it looks like we are winning this uh, slowly but surely and we also have our second boat we built two boats a little bit earlier uh, we need two in order to do some double landing kind of shenanigans and so and of course migration controls is coming along quite quite nicely we'll probably welcome support yeah we don't really want to juice up the uh those guys but we will be getting this relatively shortly and then we'll be need to get to think about either a rev or something else Ooh, we need to be doing this i think we'll go for empiricism now uh we'll look to make it so that we get it a little bit quicker um once we get it i think we'll be going straight into railways because uh the sulfite uh pul pulping uh uh, it's hard to say this really fast. Sulfide pulping, sulfide pulping, sulfide pulping. This will allow the paper mills to be capitalist owned, which is going to help a lot. And steel tools are a big deal. And getting into the railways is all, all of it's going to be very, very nice. Um, and so I think we can rev after this. 
maybe though after migration controls the the thing is, is we're either going to be revving or we're going to be passing something else and so we would need to think about what we would want to pass instead uh but uh we have made it so with the voting already in place we should post rev be able to you know move and shake and make some make something happen but i think what we will want to do is just go straight for homesteading to provoke the rev Oh, it doesn't even radicalize the uh, samurai. They still probably join the rev, and it's still probably absolutely massive, which is not fully ideal, but maybe we can make the samurai happy by going dedicated police force, um, and that way we get a rev of just uh, them and manage to keep the samurai in government somehow. I think this would be ideal. Uh, that way they don't rev, something like this. We'll see if we can shake that out. We've been adding a little bit of construction, but with Empiricism unlocked, we do want to proc the event, and we kind of want to research a little bit faster. So we're going to go universities up to level 3. Uh, we are also going to go to a dedicated police force, which should not kneecap the landowners a little bit, where hopefully we get a nicer looking revolution. Uh, the revolution, either way, will be a little bit uncomfortable. But also in this time, we can go for public schools now that we have Empiricism, uh, which is going to help us kneecap the Buddhist monks, which would be nice to do before the revolution because when everyone gets spit out and all the clout is like all shooken up and it's hard to make a legitimate government having not a super caked up uh you know uh, buddhist monks is going to be super super useful and public schools will help for that because when you pull up literacy you pull down the uh clout attraction of the buddhist monks or devout in general so we are making kind of slow and steady progress the construction is coming up we are moving forward dedicated police force with relatively good uh efforts i think that we'll take a pause to try and make sure we get the best event here um we are considering uh just firing enough guys to provoke the revolution so we just hire and fire enough guys we can get enough uh you know negative kind of approval uh that we might be able to force it so that we get just these guys but i think i like the idea of being a little slow and steady going for the public schools and then once we have public schools um then revving uh but maybe we should just be ripping the band-aid off here i'm not entirely sure we're definitely going to try and finish out dedicated police force before we rev we've also gone after balungan because a lot of people look like they wanted to defend brunei so that suddenly didn't seem like the best option uh when we were going to try and go for it uh we do not have an interest there anymore because we moved it so we'd have to wait for an interest uh but we are trying to you know do some small ball expansion that's pretty efficient uh and that we can do with two boats and 20 battalions this type of thing uh because there's not a whole lot you can do with that Sindh was a nice pickup uh this province is pretty strong and it gives us access later to the Sikh empire it has a lot of sulfur uh and it notably can produce opium and has a 20 percent throughput on on that opium i believe it's the only province in the game that can do this um but uh you know things are coming along we're trying to stay above water and as far as this goes you know we are making pretty steep gdp growth despite uh you know being unrecognized in this sort of thing and i think what we're gonna do uh let's see we will do this one but i think what we're gonna do uh is we are gonna wait until we natural spread up to line infantry and then maybe try and rev either either rev then or fight russia then this i think is the plan so we're not spreading uh, the tech we need now or the tech we would like before we rev, uh, which is line infantry. We'll probably actively research it after getting railways, something like this. Um, we do need to pop, pop the atmospheric engine pump event. I'm shocked that it's not popping. Uh, we just need to build more mines and have them be profitable. But it's nice that it will be popping after we get mechanical tools because it will give us tech progress towards railways. So that's the thing. Um, kind of wanted to review the economy. We just hit 100 construction and so if we take a look through we see we do have uh, quite a few textile mills these are one that we have natural uh, automatic expanding in Kansai this is a really good secondary good but we're primarily focused on tools uh, at least here uh, in kind of the main areas we are going to try and swap up to gas streetlights relatively soon uh, but it's very tool focused and then in the rural areas we've tried not to build any rice farms and livestock this has just been auto queue but you see we have 30 iron mines we had none at the start and we have a bunch of logging camps and a little bit of fishing wharves. These fishing wharves are helping to prevent us from uh, constructing uh, any sort of grain. And it is helping to keep the grain price down because it's substitute uh, goods. I think we do want to kind of build maybe a little bit more groceries because we have really cheap sugar. And I think we did not put in sweeteners. Yo. Uh -oh. um, <clears throat> 
when our first groceries started coming on up. Let's take a look. These are, uh, we're gonna set it to automated expansion because something that is going to be important, uh, you know, as we progress uh, here in the game is going to be, we need to get urban centers to level five everywhere as part of the secondary event after the revolution, after the honorable restoration. And so we're gonna need to do this, um, you know, uh, as part of what we're doing. Um, but we are also going into Transvaal here. As far as expansion goes, we've done a lot of puppets. Uh, in particular, we've puppeted uh, Trans... Or we're puppeting Transvaal. We've puppeted here. We've puppeted here. Puppeted here. Pup and puppeted here. We're looking to get a lot of interest. Looking to get areas. And these puppets will help us in the revolution a little bit. So that also will be nice. Okay, so I think it's time to rev. And uh, this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe we could put it off a little while longer. Because we don't have... Uh, we don't have line infantry. But the line infantry will help us with Russia when we go that route. Uh, we've also been trying to get, you know, we're trying to get the, the event for atmospheric engine. So maybe we should actually just wait until the atmospheric engine event fires. Uh, we're currently at 50%. We just need to get some of these a little bit more profitable. Uh, we have some like these mines which are not fully employed and we can try and massage this up by exporting sulfur, for example. Uh, sulfur is a fine export, uh, even though it's not very productive. We can just export it to the British because the British are the closest. And so like this will come on up. This guy wants to act autocracy what come on my guy what are you what's your deal you're an autocratic okay you're an autocratic religious guy that's cool that's super cool okay and so uh, he's not gonna like what we're about to do and so i think that yeah i think we're just gonna go for it um it's gonna be kind of uncomfortable uh we might miss out on the atmospheric engine pump event what we're gonna do is this and then we go to pass uh, particularly homesteading. And it's kind of timely because we have to do this before uh, all of the samurai approval decays out. Uh, they are at neutral. They should not jump out of government like the shogunate will, uh, which will delegitimize us, will be unacceptable. It will be impossible for us to form anything. Uh, but we kind of want to do this before our next election anyways. Um, in particular, if we just unpause, these guys get super mad and they jump out. But since the samurai are in government and will stay in government, they shouldn't become insurrectionary. Um, <clears throat> and so this will be a bit of a thing. Uh, stuff should adjust as uh, all these IG approvals uh, starts to make differences. I don't think I clicked spacebar again. Weird. Um, but we are also trying to turn on, you know, uh, the steel tools, uh, which are going to be a little bit uncomfortable. That's a lot of steel. Uh, but th we need these things to employ up. Uh, I think we're going to be able to cover it with all of our steel. Uh, but here we have the revolution is coming and it is only the landowners and we have a whole bunch of area that is not going to be under the rev, which is really ideal. Uh, and so we're super happy about this. We're actually going to probably move that iron mine to the back of the queue. And we are going to ramp up a lot of iron mines here specifically to help, uh, you know, make the revolution a little bit less uncomfortable. But having this small revolution is much, much, much nicer than having this enormous everything but the capital in terms of um, they are going to run up a huge bill. They are going to spend a lot of money, um, and we are going to be in, like, some sort of deficit at the end of this, and getting out from that, under that is difficult, and by delaying it, we are hoping to have a bit more construction kind of at the end when we do the full restoration thing, and so this is kind of our idea behind having a little bit more delayed and slow thing. Now, we are illegitimate. I don't think there's a way to make us legitimate, um, and we want to keep the armed forces in government specifically, because as long as they're in government and they're happy, they will not join this revolution. Um, they can still be uh, not unhappy and will join a revolution if they are out of government, but as long as we keep them in they shouldn't join the rev so after waiting around a little bit our rev has popped here uh we also this is right before the election so i think we could have timed it a little bit better um but this is the current state of affairs we do not want to swap over for this at least not right now because actually no we could swap over now because keeping the landowners in government is no longer important and so we will do this so we will be able to start passing homesteading so this is going to be super nice um that we can kind of progress towards it this revolution is pretty small we do have uh some of our boils coming in and we are doing okay economically, but we will take on the amount of debt that they accrue. So even though we're making money, we're not going to look to add any sort of um, 
we're not going to look to add anything they'll probably switch back to regular construction maybe they'll stay on iron frame um, but we are going to look to resolve some shortages and try and make this a revolution as uh, not uncomfortable as possible this is our biggest shortage because of course all of our iron is over here and so we will uh, import it from the aristocratic revolt uh, they will embargo us of course but uh, at least temporarily this will ease up and we'll look to put uh, in some import routes in a few other places as well and look to resolve that specifically uh, after which we should yeah there's the instant embargo uh, but we have a much stronger military than they do uh, because we have cannons and they do not we also have a military they're entirely conscripts I don't even think we're going to conscript up for this but maybe we should a little bit so actually let's activate a couple conscripts we're going to activate conscripts where we have not um a lot of industry built up uh, and just kind of everywhere else where we don't have industry and they'll come out to play. Uh, we will also make sure the conscripts uh, are on, all on cannons, the ones that we have. Uh, before we had it just in the capital because we knew the capital wasn't going to rev. Uh, this will get a little bit expensive so we might need to put in another import specifically for more cannons. Um, Oop, just about here. Yeah, the cannons are going to be a bit of a problem over the course of this game. So we'll look to just, uh, or over the course of the war. And our atmospheric engine of, engine of uh, event finally pops, which of course will give us progression on the railways. So now we're almost done with railways too. I think we will, in the capital here, put down a motor industry uh, kind of planning to deal with this. Oh my god, really? Come on. Now it's virtually unwinnable. I, I hate this so much, dude. <sighs> China just like randomly, well, they didn't like us very much, so I wouldn't call it randomly thumbing our pie, but uh, we've been improving relations with them for a while. They've been trying to damage relations. They've been rivaling us, this sort of thing. <sighs> oh my God. I just, uh, yeah, I don't think this is, I think suddenly we need to side with the aristocratic revolt. Man, this is such an annoying mechanic. We might just take a load, uh, instead. Uh, I don't even know if I'll include this in the video. Maybe it's worth including, but, like, this is just such a frustrating situation where... It's just, like, run-breaking. So, what happens when we switch sides? Well, we'll kneecap all of these guys... Uh, and then the Shogunate will be super strong, and it kind of just bricks our run. He is protectionist, though. So he supports interventionism, but he doesn't support the thing we need in order to get interventionism. Man. God, this is so asinine. Like, and this is just like a random variance thing, too. I mean, maybe we just try and see if um, China will not offer very many conscripts and maybe we also just try and see if we can get onto line infantry and win it anyways but this is going to be like the most uncomfortable war ever uh, we'll just activate the conscripts and we'll see what happens i guess okay so currently the mobilization level of china is very very low we did not put any war goals in on china to try and keep their mobilization lower and we are going to look to just absolutely blast a ton of landings into them and try and occupy everything before china can get in so we are going to recruit an additional admiral and an additional general here oh we finally get a this boyo here which is super nice uh finally getting industrialist we'll promote him too because we do want them to have a little bit more clout and we will recruit a general uh as well uh see what we can get we don't really want a royalist we don't really want a jingoist landowner i guess maybe the the this is the least worst and we're going to look to land with all of our smallest units um and just land repeatedly and this way, we are trying to resolve it before China raises up more of their army. We're trying to fully occupy them here. And this is kind of the plan. I think we will uh, build another one of these in Chubu because we are hurting a little bit on this front and we will need more anyways. We'll need more everywhere. And we will take, uh, I guess we'll just take that. And we are getting, looks like a full occupation here. Now, we do need to enforce on China or something, or nope, actually China should have no war goals on us. Yeah, China has no war goals on us, so it's just all about trying to dust them up before China decides they want to actually do something about this. Uh, because eventually, why did our guys get unassigned from the fronts? What the hell? Oh my god, that's so crazy. <sighs> Probably shouldn't speed five this, eh? Um, so, 
It looks like, though, Dutchie's in these sides with Brene. Is this with us? No, okay, it's not. Currency standards is decent. Actually, we probably won't use it, but it does look like we can get the full occupation here very, very, very quick. So they are going to capitulate pretty soon here. I say full occupation, but it's not yet full. I guess I shouldn't jinx it. But this has been the shortest little civil war ever. Uh, and they are ticking really fast, which is kind of why we wanted to wait a little while for um, the civil wars, because we wanted to make sure we got a little faster. Homesteading uh, going at a really good clip is also really nice. I don't think this happens if we rev as fast as possible. Uh, we will juice up the intelligentsia every day of the week. And they are about to capitulate. And after this, uh, China's out. And then we do get a truce with China, which I guess is kind of not ideal. But we will have, uh, you know, the Shogunate has been rebuked. And so we will get the Honorable Restoration. I think we have to, okay, the Ninko uh, Restoration. So we're still relatively quick. Um, we are definitely going to juice the Industrialists specifically because we do have laws that won't pass. But this is a super caked up and nice Industrialist. And we are legitimate enough to pass laws. And so we are going to be able to come through on homesteading into laissez-faire uh, because we delayed a little bit. Otherwise, if we had done it as fast as possible, we probably would have had to have gone like agrarianism in order to do the three journal entries we need to do for um, the, the full restoration. So let's take a look at those now. Uh, we need to have uh, urban centers and have railroads. Well, we just finished railroads everywhere, so we're finishing railroads everywhere. Um, so this will be really helpful. We'll be able to get these in relatively quickly here. I think we'll move this motor industry up to the very top. We are going to take a look and make sure that the, the AI didn't add a bunch of crazy stuff like a million government administrations. And we, of course, do have to swap over uh, kind of all this stuff. Now, normally, uh, don't like... That is a loud... Okay. Uh, normally... Normally we don't like using this one, but since we don't have any fertilizer already set up, maybe we use it. Actually, maybe we just import fertilizer. Uh, but the idea is we're trying to discourage, uh, you know, the building of a lot of these things. So vineyards, I guess, will be fine. Definitely going to use the tools. Got to switch all these. This is kind of the post-rev blues where all your PMs are now wrong. Uh, we will need to make sure to export a lot of hardwood. Uh, Got to get these on privately owned, which is going to be big nice. Did you switch from being secular? Let's go filing. Whoa. Were we not on filing cabinets before? Got a lot of swapping to do, though. I think we... Yeah, I think this one's fine. Uh, with, with that's going, we will go steel tools on all of them. We will go ceramics on all of them. And just try and make sure we are getting everything we want here. And so we are making money, but we probably want to take an unpause and see how things go. And just talk a little bit about... Uh, there we get the rails, which is going to be actually pretty nice. We will also put this at the front of the queue in a bunch of places uh, to try and resolve that. And uh, we will come in here, we will swap all these, and we will uh, make sure all these are being subsidized. But we're going to do wooden passenger carriages from the very start here. And so... Our industrialist guy retired. That seems fine. We got a protectionist now. That is not okay. We definitely want... <sighs> Laissez-faire. Uh, which is a bit annoying. But I guess... Uh, where's traditionalism on here? How do they feel about traditionalism? Okay, so... They won't oppose us swapping up to laissez-faire. But they... We might have to go interventionism. Or we might just have to exile this boyo. We'll probably exile that boyo uh, to get rid of him. Uh, I think that'll probably be the plan. A little bit annoying. Uh, but let's just declare neutrality in here. But we have successfully done the honorable restoration here. We do have to get the railroads up. We have to get several of these up to level 5. The samurai are not that weak, but we have to research Napoleonic warfare, uh, which we can do relatively quickly. I think that's what... Actually, let's do that now. Uh, because it's going to match spread pretty slowly, uh, and we do want to kind of get onto that type of stuff. Or, at the very least, we're going to research line. Uh, and then maybe we actually go for egalitarianism. Maybe we go for egalitarianism now. 
I just don't think we have several we have so many laws to pass before we can go proportional taxation that maybe it's not the way to go um so yeah we we got the honorable restoration now it's just all of these which are in pretty good shape we just have to get rid of traditionalism just have to research a couple texts and just have to get uh some of these up to level five and build railroads all over the place so we immediately hit a snag because the buddhist party absolutely crushed in the election much like the loud car outside and uh since we we only got one third of the election it's really really hard for us to be legitimate here with what we got going on with this and so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to reduce taxes two notches in order to be legitimate enough to try and pass this law but this does mean kind of uh we will not be able to ramp up construction as much as we would like but once we get homesteading then we should be in much better shape and we do have really high percentage to pass on homesteading you know with this block there's the problem is this block's completely incompatible with the buddhist block and so we'll try try and get through uh this at least right here and maybe we have to force another revolution even uh which is a bit uncomfortable but we'll see exactly how all this shakes out so we passed homesteading without having another revolution and so the landowners are going to decay or fade away into nothingness uh what we need now is we can either go after a parliamentary republic which isn't all that supported so i don't think we're going to do that or what we can do is we can take these guys out of government uh, we do need to put someone in government. Uh, we're going to say yes, of course, we understand. And we are going to exile this guy. We're going to exile this guy because uh, he is a protectionist and we do not like that. And so he will be exiled. And uh, now we have a pacifist, which is fairly compatible with what we got going on. It will be less legitimate than what we had before with the protectionist. But we will just uh, take this guy and we will come in. And where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's because it's in here. We will reduce the taxes again, which is going to be a little un bit uncomfortable. We will be losing money, but now we can go for laissez-faire, uh, which is going to be the ideal uh, big chief uh, version of this that we kind of want to go. We could have gone interventionism, uh, but I think I like this a little bit better. We do have the production of a chemical plant. We'll put this on auto expand and let it expand up, but we are uh, off and away. Uh, now, something we're considering doing in the very near future future probably after researching napoleonic but i suppose we could do it before is getting recognition off of russia with the cheese method where you uh just land alaska they don't defend alaska and you just get war reps and recognition and that's it and you just look to get this in against them while it is very easy. Uh, we are making big strides. Uh, we have 22% on the industrialized Japan. We do have, we're building up railroads in every single one of these provinces. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to kind of like ramp up, for example, the amount of stuff we have here, which shouldn't be too, too hard. You know, we just add a few of these. Uh, we just get the urbanization on this place up. Uh, so also the urbanization here up we're looking to get that with the furniture manufacturers i think each of these add uh 20 urbanization so we'll need a little bit more than this so this is 60 and then you're gonna need one more so something like this uh will be enough and then taking a look here we could also add uh, i suppose some fishing wharves to kind of push it on up in particular it's going to need another little bit uh but we can just add like five-ish fishing wharves to make that actually let's not add five-ish fishing wharves let's add a couple unis uh and a couple construction centers because this is the new capital in the back of the queue i know we're losing money but uh i have a dream actually no this what we definitely need to start importing coal uh to try and resolve some of these issues so let's import coal from the british and do that and let's import this which has just become a little bit of a problem did we get embargoed by ching maybe that's what happened here we'll just look what's most productive and look to import uh some that are kind of low or easy on the uh, convoys and help to resolve all of that but we are coming along quite nicely we will be getting laissez-faire shortly which will uh, do this one it'll get rid of this ending of traditionalism and once we have laissez-faire we will just have this enormous pop-off which is kind of why we're less worried about um, not making as much money on top of you know the fact that we did have to switch down to like lower tax methods and so once we switch up it's gonna be we're gonna be in good shape we are currently researching the tech we need to finish this one and industrializing Japan is well on its way as we are finishing up all these railroads we will just need to add a little bit more construction and push 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 uh to try and get the end of it but we're coming up on uh you know the end of this now we will almost certainly 
take uh, Stay Focused on the Law. Actually, let's take this one. Enactment time is really nice. And worst case scenario, like absolute worst case scenario, uh, we have a heart attack and we never finish the video. But other than that, um, you know, we can do interventionism if we have to. So it's time for us to retire the samurai here as we have finished Napoleonic Warfare. Uh, we will make them lose the Bakufu ideology. They lose it either way. So we can either make them way more radical and someone dies or we can uh, minus weekly innovation gain for five years. I think we'll, I think we'll take the minus weekly innovation gain. We're not going to be actively researching any, any military tech after this. Um, or yeah, so, uh, we'll just leave that where it is. Uh, we do kind of want to eventually go egalitarianism, uh, but I think that we might be able to go canneries first and this will be a little bit better. Actually, let's go water tube boiler. Water tube boiler is an insane tech. So that's probably going to be the last tech we research, at least for this session and probably for this run. We are currently in the process of annexing Oman here. And so that'll be that. Uh, for the industrialization, we have doubled our progress. And so we're progressing quite well for that. And of course, we do have to get rid of laissez-faire in order to finish this. We're probably going to try and get recognition uh, off of Russia once we finish this war uh, Which, I mean, obviously, you just accept annexation here. And so we'll tidy up a PMs and I think get ready for a war against Russia. Maybe we'll need to think about it a little bit. So... So we have started here this war with Russia, I believe. So the important critical thing is, can we defend against the landings? And if we can defend against the landings, uh, what ends up happening is uh, we just land Alaska and we just hold on for a dear life. Uh, so we will take a lot of activations on our conscripts. We're going to try and do areas where we know we don't have too, too much industry and not conscript everywhere, but mainly just look to hold on to Japan here. And then we are going to double land over here in Russia. Russia proper or sorry in Alaska not Russia proper and all you need for recognition is a piece of land and all you need for war reps is a piece of land and so we're going to look to get both of those here now we are going to promote this boyo up a bit because we want him to have the lion's share of the troops uh, but now we're just going to try and hold on for dear life I haven't done this method in a while I'm not sure if the AI is a little bit better at resolving it now uh, but we will find out here so this is their first landing and it doesn't look like it's going to work and we're just going to have to defend against this repeatedly. Now that I see how bad it is, I actually wish we did not mobilize quite as much, uh, but we get our landing off on them and so we will get be able to push. Um, they will send troops, I guess. Uh, the troops are going to be a long ways off and all we need to do to tick them below zero is have a piece of this and so we can just repeatedly re-land uh, once we decay them down to zero. Uh, but them actually committing troops here is... A uh, a bit of a novelty they did not used to do that and so oh, I have no idea why our guy got unassigned from this front but whatever uh, so this will just be kind of like a wait and enforce type of thing they have a ton from exhaustion why do they have a ton from exhaustion already I don't really know uh, but we will just I mean we can look to just get our guys out of here actually whenever this happens uh, you know just return them when they send their guys and just wait mainly wait for them to tick down we do have a secession movement because we took this this is fine we should be able to deal with this uh, without too much difficulty now this is a bit of a problem and so hmm it is a little bit of a problem. So we were incorporating some of these states. We're going to quit that uh, and not incorporate a lot of these uh, in order to refund some of this up here. Because they were a source of some of the government administration. We'll add some admins to the thing and look to sort out some of the problems we're experiencing. So we complete the industrialization portion of the journal here. So we just have uh, passing laissez-faire to go uh, in order to get the Meiji restoration. Uh, and so this will be, we will be coming on up on this. I think we will take the loyal. No, let's take the, the Urban Center throughput. As far as the war with Russia is going, it's going. Uh, we're just going to need to reland this repeat. I, I think we're just going to wait until, uh, well, I think we're just going to actually wait with Russia specifically and wait until they get to 0% and then land them and look to enforce on them that way. They, we, we definitely over conscripted, which is a big reason why we're suffering some of the money. Um, we did manage to find a much more legitimate looking government though. Uh, so we could increase the taxes again, which is going to help out a lot. Uh, we do want to come after the Buddhist monks kind of in the near future. Uh, specifically us having a double agitator from Buddhist monks is pretty annoying. So can we actually exile? No, we can't. 
We could give one of them leadership though, which would remove them as an agitator. So this guy, uh, but this guy's a moderate. We kind of hate both of their ideologies here. And so I guess we'll just stick off of it. A little bit annoying um, that we kind of low rolled in that regard, but this war uh, shouldn't be too much longer. Then we'll have recognition, then we'll be able to deficit spend, and combined with getting laissez faire, we're just going to be like smooth sailing, 200 construction, uh, you know, as soon as we get on up there. And so this is, I think we'll play to 200 construction, and this will be the plan. All right, and we're about to get the full restoration here. All we need to do is lucky roll on here, and we get it. With the full of Shabuzzle, the Meiji Restoration, and we have gotten it in under 20 years, um, which is, by the way, not the fastest I think you can get it, um, but it is relatively quick, uh, and we get Renewed Japan, uh, The Empire Shall Rise, I think is the still the best one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Japanese Empire will ri rise. Of course, this is a good vintage. We'll take the Prestigio, and we are enforcing here on Russia. All we need to do is land them, and they should be pretty willing to give it up. Um, and so we'll just see. Uh, and now suddenly they're much more willing uh, that now that we've landed them. Um, we, of course, have been keeping this big 76er back at home, right, where he belongs, because uh, at home, or from home, he can... Uh, defend against any landing that they can send our way which is going to be kind of the way that we brick on this and uh did we get laissez-faire as well oh yeah of course we got laissez-faire so now of course we're making tons of money the ipt uh has shot up because it's no longer getting malice and we're making a ton of money now and we can look to expand construction of course let's go after this uh put in another uh tax i think we'll be fine and then we just look to blast construction we can of course deficit spend much better as well because we pay less in interest because we're on laissez-faire and we're going to even pay less less in interest because we are about to get recognized which is going to be a huge one we'll probably be an unrecognized great power or sorry a recognized great power uh after we finish this but we just need to dust them up right right quick they should be like kind of getting a little bit close to capitulating we do want to peel the war reps off of them we can enforce on them for just recognition right now uh but considering we're like already in it we might as well go for the war reps as well it's not going to be too too difficult it doesn't look like they're sending troops this time and so we'll just look to get a comfortable occupation and tick down on them uh we do need to looks like get a little bit more yeah they've deleted some of the government admins here not exactly ideal but uh not exactly bad because we do have a lot of places that don't have enough tax capacity so we'll just look to up the construction there specifically uh and that'll be good now are we draining our investment pool no we're growing our investment pool so this means we want to add a lot of construction we did put some down uh but we didn't put it down at the front of the queue and so we will look to just kind of uh, get everything up to uh, multiples of five. And this is going to be quite a bit of construction, but we can definitely, we will be able to afford it because our investment pool is growing right now and it is absolutely massive right now. And we are looking to drain the beast, if you know what I mean. And so this will be kind of where we go. And we get this at the same time? Come on. It's just glorious, glorious riches. So let's get that one in. Uh, that, of course, will be one of these. And condensing pump engine is a huge one. So now our economy is going to pop off. And this will help facilitate us, like, absolutely blasting construction as well. Uh, as far as society tech goes, I do think we want to just kind of go beeline in pure uh, egalitarianism at this point. Uh, because that tech's going to be really, really good. And kind of in the back here, to make use of some of our other money, we're just going to start ramping up and looking to catch up as far as this goes. Actually, that might be a little bit too much. Let's just do this. A little bit more conservative. Um, what? They're going after the Sikh Empire, but we wanted to do that. Uh, we're not playing this run long term, but them subjugating the Sikh Empire is a little bit annoying. But, uh, Russia, certainly you want to <laughs> throw in the towel now. So now, look at how much money we're making. And our investment pool is growing. So we're basically making like 70k now uh, that we're recognized. Uh, are, we're not a GP? What is this nonsense? We will uh, look to rectify that, actually. I think by just building up a little bit of a navy, uh, it's pretty, it's the, that's the cheapest way to rectify it. So let's look to just build a little bit of a navy and then the construction should do the rest. Uh, so let's add a little bit more construction 
at the front of the queue and then look to get things up to around 200-ish construction uh, in relatively quick order. So we do manage to get up to 200 construction with more than enough uh, income to go. Now it's important to note that uh, this plus this does equal 28k so we kind of have 28k extra but we have such a big investment pool to like um, kind of build out that I think we could afford to add a little bit more construction, maybe up to 230-ish, uh, but we do want to be a little bit conservative because this diplomatic pact will eventually run out with Russia. So maybe like 280 is something that we could build up to um, in relatively short order. We're almost a GP, which means we could deficit spend very effectively once we're a GP, but we probably can, um, you know, kind of where we're at as well. And as far as research goes and like where the future goes, uh, we're researching egalitarianism right now uh, so that we will be able to, you know, hopefully after wealth voting, hopefully we can get it, get off of land-based taxation. We're still on land-based taxation. And once we get onto proportional, we'll be making another 31K and it'll also like improve the SOL and like this type of stuff. Not that this is an enormous uh, consideration at this point where we're at, uh, but... I think that this has been a pretty good opening salvo, like first 20 years in terms of what we can do with Japan. Um, just to kind of quickly go over what we did, uh, we did uh, open up our market by declaring on the UK and then we put in some trades so that we would kind of massage uh, our entire economy to be more industrial. Um, we also got recognition from Russia uh, by landing them. We weren't able to get a market liberal, so that did slow things down. If you were trying to absolute speed run, I do think you would use Use the market liberal trick we discussed earlier um but it's not the end of the world that we didn't get it um let's see we also th did one other thing that was semi oh yeah we forced a rev in order to um get through the restoration a bit faster um we've had pretty good economic growth throughout um we did talk about kind of where we were, were looking with the economy where we were tool focused secondary on the textile mills but mainly 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 focused on the resources uh and the resources that are owned by the capitalists which are the iron mines, the coal mines, and of course, the wood. We have been exporting hardwood um, and looking to just really, really blast out the wood construction because this is one of the most efficient um, industries at creating a lot of investment pool transfer. And so that's kind of why we were big on the wood. Um, you know, just huge growth here. Uh, th things are going really well. This should be fairly straightforward uh safe to play as far as expansion goes we did pick up transvaal in kind of the interim just now we went gaza into transvaal we also went after oman which we have since annexed um we have gotten all of kenya because uh great britain flubbed a little bit uh we will make sure we actually start colonizing over here because we weren't because we're bad and um you know, this will be, we will secure a pretty large portion of the Congo with kind of what we've done. We do have to go that direction in tech though. Um, we also expanded in Macron and also puppeted Sindh. I know it looks like uh, it might be the UK's puppet, but no, that's our puppet. And so, you know, things are really going really well, important to note, or kind of interesting to note, we could adopt state Shinto, uh, but I think that uh, the Shinto piousness is worse than Buddhist moralis moralist, and so we're probably not going to, well, we're not going to click that, um, but it's just interesting to note, uh, the main reason because they support ethno-state and hate multiculturalism, which is, of course, meta right now. But I hope you enjoyed uh, this starting steps, kind of how to do Japan in 1.3, or revisiting it for 1.3, because it does present um, a little bit of challenges, but I still think it's pretty, pretty doable. We have got we got the full restoration in under 20 years. I know it's after 20 years now, but that was just the last little bit of winding up the construction up to 200. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and other than that, have a good day.